let's move into some actual like good metal gossip and let's talk about um slipknot so as a lot of people know the band got rid of jay weinberg um it's like five months ago at the end of december yeah so we're just going to revisit some of that this is from the la times slipknot slipknot's decision to part ways with longtime member jay weinberg left the drummer quote heartbroken and blindsided but grateful nonetheless even on the hardest days i like to think he'd be stoked about the adventure that was in store for him weinberg said of his 10 year old self as he addressed his departure from the heavy metal band on instagram in a statement shared sunday weinberg reflected on his 10 years with slipknot 10 years wow Time flies. He was in the band for 10 years. Yeah, that's crazy. And the outpouring of love and support he has received since the band revealed his exit. Last weekend, Slipknot said in a sense deleted statement on its website that it was intent on evolving. And we're going to keep that quote in mind because we're mm-hmm. going to get into that a little bit more. We're going to dive into intent on evolving later. Um, Weinberg was the second longtime member to get cut this year. Slipknot ended its partnership with sampler and keyboardist Craig Jones, who joined the band in 1996 in June. So um, there's a lot of speculation, and I don't know how much of this you've seen, Joey, on who the new drummer for Slipknot is. Have you seen any of this? I am not a Slipknot fan, so I don't keep up with Joey, it. how dare you? I don't. How dare you? How dare you say that, like... <laughs> You just broke so many hearts. No, I know. No, they got they got a couple of rippers, but I yeah, I've never been a a maggot or whatever they call them. So yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, there's an opportunity for them to campaign with Trump this year. So <laughs> forget I said that. I know they're not going to do that. But you said maggot, and I was like, that's kind of what they call the MAGA people too. So oh, ma- MAGA, MAGA. Yeah. Yeah, it's like M- well, it was, you know, just a little side note. When Slipknot like like came out, and it kind of, well, I shouldn't say when they came out. They, I think they were around a few years before, but when that first album came out and they really blew up, like I was at the time, I was listening to music that was heavier than that, you know. So it was just for me, it was like, eh, whatever. Like, what bands were you listening to? Well, that's when like, you know, Norma Jean. Uh, well, I guess it was right before they were Norma Jean, but, uh, like Zayo, Living Sacrifice. I mean, that stuff was was just as heavy, if not some of it heavier, you know. And um, I don't know the cl- the clown masks and stuff never appealed to me a whole lot. Um, I don't know. I just never got into it a whole lot. But that's understandable. That first album, though, is probably my if if I had to pick a favorite Slipknot album, it would probably be that first one. But yeah, I mean, it, that album just came for me at a time because um, it was like early 2000s. Like, I think it came out in 99 or 2000. It might have yeah. came out in 99, but I don't think I really started listening to it until 2000. Yeah. And it like, there was just something so frantic about it, like the energy of it. And sure. it was such a great progression from Corn because it was like new metal, but not new metal, like new metal, but like, like because Ross Robinson produced it too. Right, right, right. It had some of that corn, like rawness, especially with the vocals. Obviously, yep. like, uh, um, and and it just like, man, but it's more percussive. Yeah, and I had also just moved to LA, and that song "You Can't See California Without Marlon Brando's Eyes" yep. like, that was like my anthem. You know, like at the time, I, I was yep. just like because I was poor as shit and like <laughs> just moved down here with like a suitcase and like like li- living hungry and it was just like so yeah that, i mean but i i give slipknot credit too because i feel like they've maintained relevance oh yeah in a way that a band like them i would have never expected to you know? yep yep yeah for sure because i mean you look at some of the other new metal bands that blew up at the same time that just never carried that legacy. They don't fill arenas in 2024, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it might not be my taste, but definitely a influential band in the genre. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. You can respect it. That's what I say too. It's like, I, I might not like, I always respect musicians of any genre that are like doing something that's drawing people in, whether I, vibe on it or not because eventually i think most of the time once i like get past my um predisposed ideas or my you know inherent biases 
um, I usually like everything if it's yeah. good. But I agree. Anyway, um, there's this whole drama, so I'm going to fill you in. I'll fill you in and anyone mm -hmm. else who doesn't know about this with uh, Slipknot and Sepultura because uh, there's it's rumored and it still has not been confirmed yet that Eloy Casagrande left Sepultura to join Slipknot. So rather than explain this myself, I will bring you up to speed, Joey, by sharing this video of your boy, El Step Stefano Siberiano. <laughs> yeah, have you seen this guy, by the way? Okay, hold on a sec. Before I, before I pray this. Because I so this guy is like a TikTok drummer. You oh, yes, I know this guy. You've seen him, I'm sure. Yeah, he yeah. is amazing. He, he's amazing, and he's, yeah. He's like drinking coffee while he's playing drums and like smoking a joint and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. I love this guy. But he, he kind of lays this whole slipknot drummer thing out in a way that it's like it's better than probably anything I could do. So just listen. I'm going to go all in. OK, I don't know if you're familiar with the casino. Personally, I love gambling, but going all in means putting <laughs> everything into just one option. OK, one possibility. And this video is going to be my bet. Also, remember that I have started my own band and we are dropping our first single this Thursday. You got the video on my channel. As you know, already I posted a video a couple months ago talking about how Slipknot fired Jay Wimberg. OK, we still don't know any details, probably because they have a lot of NDAs, but the most important thing is that Jay Wimberg is out. Apparently, they want to go in a different direction. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I only did it for a different direction. That's I kept like, that's the stuff that kept sticking with me. Like, why did they get rid of Jay Weinberg? But you keep like this. They wanted to go in a different direction. Stuff keeps popping up for one reason, because people is Slipknot going to have their Metallica load moment or their same anger moment. <laughs> We'll see. Okay, keep watching. Thought that I was going to be the drummer for Slipknot. And as I said on the video, there is no way that's going to happen for a lot of different reasons. Again, if you haven't seen it, you got the video right there. However, on that video, without knowing anything, I also said that there was only one drummer, just one motherfucker on planet Earth that I would pick in order to keep creating music. Out of all the drummers out there, I only picked one. That guy is Eloy Casagrande. Eloy Casagrande is known because he has been the drummer for Sepultura since... So just to pause for a second, if you've ever seen this guy play, like for him to give respect to someone is like a pretty high mark of confidence. Because this guy is like a, a sick drummer on his own right. Yeah. If I am not mistaken, 2011. That means he has spent 13 years on that band. And maybe you know him, maybe you don't, but he is what I consider to be the best metal drummer in the world right now, period. If you don't know who that guy is, you got a full video of me talking in detail about everything he's doing on the drum kit right there. Now, I said Eloy because obviously not only he is way superior than anyone else out there when it comes to technicality, but also because his taste and musicality is out of the charts. And on top of that, he's young, he has energy, and he fucking loves a Slipknot. We have seen him playing a lot of a Slipknot songs without any effort, and the results are just fucking amazing. So I just said it back in the day. I didn't even need to think about it. Eloy is the only one that can do that job better than anybody else. I'm afraid he's way superior than Joey, he's way superior than Jay, and he's probably way superior than anybody else on planet Earth. Damn! <laughs> He said Eloy is better than Jay or Joey. That's high praise. Yeah when it comes down to playing metal. However, people call me crazy because of one simple reason. Again, he has been drumming in Sepultura for 13 years. Something weird happened though when the band announced that they were going to do one last tour. They were separating. Okay, they've been together for 40 years and they wanted to do the last tour before splitting up. And that obviously cancelled the possibility of Eloy joining a Slipknot. However, Sepultura just posted something very weird. Let me just read it for you and let me know what you think. Grayson Necrudman to replace Eloy Casagrande on Celebrating Life Through Death Farewell Tour. 
the Celebrating Life Through Death Tour, a farewell tour over the next 18 months that will celebrate the band's 14th anniversary and also its farewell to the stage. Blah 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 blah. blah. A tour of this magnitude took nearly a year of preparing and planning, which would require a lot of commitment, ethics, and loyalty to their fans, as well as respecting for the band's history, something that is a clear priority to Andreas Kisser, Derry Green, and Paolo Cisto. However, on February 6th, a few days prior the first rehearsal, drummer Eloy Casagrande informed the band that he was leaving Sepultura to pursue a career in another project. Let me say that again. To pursue a career in another project. The band were taken by surprise. Without prior warning, he immediately left the band, abandoning everything related to Sepultura. Now let me ask you one fucking question. After being in a band for 13 fucking years straight, devoting your life to that band, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, they haven't had any disagreements, they are not mad with each other, nothing's going on, but suddenly one of the members decides to go because he wants to pursue a career in another project. Now, obviously something massive must have happened to Eloy in order for him to make that decision. 13 years in Sepultura, that's no joke and that's a lot of loyalty. That happened on February 6th. Now, just one question. What other band needs a fucking drummer right now? Not only a band that needs a drummer, but only a band so massive that even somebody like Eloy, who is already in a very successful band, decides to leave everything behind in order to join that project. That is a fair question to ask, and the answer, to be honest, is that I cannot assure you that Aloy is going to be the drummer for Slipknot, but I think I already did. Yeah. Not only right now, but also on my other video, you know. Anyway, hmm. so he makes a strong case yep. that uh, I don't think a lot of people have made. And I didn't realize, man, Sepultura has been going for that long. <laughs> yeah. With those I, yeah, there. that's interesting. And I, I mean, he, he's, the dude's very compelling in his argument. <clears throat> it yeah. could be, though, too. I mean, just to think outside the box a little bit. Devil's advocate. Yeah, I mean, it's like this is the last hurrah for Sepultura. So anything that comes up that's, you know, decent decent wages or opportunity is going to be a good look for him. Well, yeah. Like, after this tour, we're we're done. Done. Last tour anyway. It's like, what? Yeah. Now, granted, I think it it says something if you're in the band for 13 years that you'd want to do the last tour. But right, I mean, if you got to feed your family or something though too but if you got offered to be in slipknot and you're well, like yeah, that, that's, that's like, why you i'm saying start this, right now tomorrow this is compelling yeah yeah so it's it hasn't been confirmed yet but let's keep going down this rabbit hole um clown explains why slipknot fired jay weinberg so let's read some of this um this is from Planet Rock. Slipknot percussionist and co-founding member Sean Clown Crahan has spoken for the first time about drummer Jay Weinberg. And this is from last year. So this is all pretty old news for those of you who are... But I thought I would kind of thread a thread a needle here because if we're getting to something that is interesting, that is newer news. Um, maggots across the globe were flabbergasted on, 5th, on the 5th of November when Slipknot dropped the surprise news they had parted ways with Jay Weinberg after a decade due to quote-unquote creative reasons. Jay Weinberg, who is the son of longstanding Bruce Springsteen and the E Street band drummer Max Weinberg, issued a statement a week later saying he was heartbroken and blindsided to receive the phone call, confirming he was fired by the band. In a new interview with NME to promote Slipknot's 25th anniversary December 2024 UK tour, Clown confirmed that Weinberg did not leave Slipknot on his own accord. As far as Jay goes, what people need to know is that Jay did not leave the band. And what I want to say is that we're moving on, Clown said. Like the statement said, we're choosing to do something different. This space we're at right now is a very special space. A very, very special space. 
How special? Very, very special. Very, very. Very, very special. Thought about and generated by most of the OGs, longstanding members in parentheses. So when he says OGs, like Clown, Corey Taylor, Mick Thompson, Sid Wilson, and Jim Root. Clown also said that despite a turbulent past six months, which has now also seen the exit of Craig Jones, Slipknot are in a good place. Now we're in a place that we never imagined we would be 25 years on. We're standing really strong and we're better as people. I think all of us are really happy about what we're creating to the point where we're scared a little bit. That fear is what we live for and that's what we've always done. That's why we're still here. He continued, as far as the new album that's happening that's happening, but that's another plan. These live dates are coming first, and we're here to have a good time. This band has never been happier, and that takes a, a lot because we've been through a lot. Drugs, women, money, fame, ego, isolation, but we're on track. Elsewhere in the chat, Clown said that Slipknot's lost album will finally land in 2024. It's definitely arriving next year. You have my word. The art's been done. It's been mixed. It's been mastered. It's definitely coming out in 2024, and it's such a great album. Corey is my favorite singer ever, and you'll never hear him sing the same way as on this album, so it's been worth holding it back. It's such a different, timeless project. Due to phenomenal demand, Slipknot added a second date at London Zoto. So that was the setup for this article that just came out today from Loudwire, which I had not... I, I had no idea about this because, you know, I'm, I'm a Slipknot fan, but I'm not, like, a super fan. You're not you know a maggot. I mean... <laughs> I mean I'm something that ends with agate, but it's probably not a maggot. <laughs> so, um, everything we know about Slipknot's unreleased album called tentatively titled Look Outside Your Window. I thought this was really interesting, and it's why I kind of suggested like Slipknot maybe having their load moment. So let's let's dive into this real quick. Here's everything we know about Slipknot's unreleased album, Look Outside Your Window, which is supposedly due out this year. Hardcore Slipknot fans have been hearing about Look Outside Your Window, an album that was recorded by several members of the band, by several members of the band in the late 2000s. So that's interesting, too. Like he's oh, like, Okay, question. If it's just several members, is it a Slipknot thing? Yeah, because it's it's basically the solid members, the ones who are from the original Iowa clan. Like everyone else has hired guns at this point, I think, right? You know what I mean? It's like the the core members. Sure. Um, but and that's why I highlighted that though, because it says that it was recorded by several members of the band. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be released multiple times since the recording commenced, but it was delayed each time for different reasons. With Slipknot's it's first like performance, like Chinese democracy, like the the gun. But the thing is, they've put out other stuff since this. Like yeah. they get into this a little bit, so I don't want to ruin it. But with Slipknot's first performance, twenty twenty four, taking place later this month at Las Vegas Sick New World Festival. So Sick New World is in April. Wow. So if if Eloy is the drummer, I'm sure it'll come out when they do a live show. Um, cause that would be the only reason he would have to quit that Sepultura tour. Right. Cause he's like, he's, I got to do dates with these guys like right away. So well, they, start rehearsing. they, they could just give the dude a number like they did when they started and we still don't, won't know who it is. Right. But him being absent from the Sepultura tour kind of is right. makes it a dead giveaway. Um, with Slim, okay, first performance. Thus, we've compiled. So, Loudwire, uh, this is really actually a, a good piece for them. Like, I, I rarely give music journalists credit, but I will give the woman who wrote this credit. Uh, what's her name? Lauren Schaffner? Hmm. Schaff Schaffer? Schaffner. Schaffner, yeah. So, congratulations, Lauren. This is a really good article, actually. So, she, uh, she, she kind of put together all these little um, factoids about this supposed unreleased record that Slipknot has coming out. And based on all the like stuff around the Jay Weinberg axing, it sounds like maybe it's like, he was like, well, I thought we were playing heavy stuff or so. You know what I mean? I'm just obviously speculating. Mm -hmm. I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know anything for sure, but he was kind of like, Oh, like I wanted to shred and you guys are like going in a different direction now, you know, um, a couple of the songs that were written during the studio sessions for Look Outside Your Window wound up on other albums. We also know that some of the tentative song titles are as well as the band's style. 
Corey compares it to. Keep reading. To, okay, so anyway, they worked on it during the All Hope is Gone sessions. Um, so that's probably... So it says, while working on their fourth studio album, All Hope is Gone, some of the band members had, had another recording session going on simultaneously. That's interesting. They ended up with a batch of songs that were more melodic than the ones from the other sessions, so they decided to hold the tracks, according to an interview Corey Taylor did on Sirius XM's Trunk Nation. And so here's the, the OG members thing. Only Clown, Corey Taylor, Jim Root, and Sid Wilson were involved in the session. So even Mick uh, is not involved. Clown started writing the sessions for the album with Jim Root, but Corey Taylor and Sid Wilson eventually joined in on the experimenting. The truth is, while we were making that album, Jim and I, who were the only two out of all nine original members who came to the studio, were there every day from the beginning to the end, Clown told Kerrang of the recording process. And then Corey and Sid became part of it, and all four of us became part of it. It wasn't just any one person's, it became ours. And because of that, we played it for a lot of people, and we said, what do you think? And these people would always say, it's not Slipknot. I feel a load moment coming. <laughs> it has a Radiohead vibe. According to Corey Taylor, the experimental music and melodic nature of the batch of songs is reminiscent of Radiohead. There's something about those songs. They're very solemn, very energetic, very artistic. For people who are used to a certain way of Slipknot sounding, this doesn't sound anything like that, he told Eddie Trunk. It's much more of a rock vibe. Honestly, it's much more of a Radiohead vibe, to be honest. Maybe I'll love it. I mean, it sounds like it's probably really good. Yeah. Apparently... Corey Taylor wanted to combine it with All Hope Is Gone. Apparently, Corey Taylor was such a fan of the material, he wanted to release it as a collaborative album with the All Hope Is Gone material. Man, I tried like hell to make those two worlds come together. All Hope Is Gone and Look Outside Your Window to the point where I was taking songs from both and kind of putting them together like arrangement sequencing. The front man explained to Eddie Trunk, I had two different versions of All Hope Is Gone that I had put together with songs from that. And just honestly, because of the emotional rifts that were in the band, the turmoil that was going on, nobody wanted to try and make that work. Hmm. Another song ended up on We Are Not Your Kind, which is the last album they just put out. Um, in a track-by-track -track breakdown of the Knots 2019 album, We Are Not Your Kind, Jim Root revealed that My Pain, which is a song I don't really remember, from the album, which means it's probably one of the slower ones, was originally written during the Look Outside Your Window sessions. My pain was something that was born at that time and was always something the clown was working on. It's like that one painting you keep going back to, Root told Kerrang. I don't think he wanted to use it for whatever it is we're going to end up calling that other music. And for all I know, we may never end up releasing it, but this was one of those things that he wanted to revisit and see where it could go. Corey pulled out all the stops to, and made it something special. Interesting. It was supposed to come out in 2019. So, oh, yeah. According to Clown, Look Outside Your Window was supposed to come out in 2019 during the We Are Not Your Kind tour cycle. Then it got pushed to Christmas Day of that year and delayed again. I just quit asking because I don't want it to interf I don't want it to interfere with this and mainly because of what it is. It just needs its own space. And like everything we're doing right now, it's just going to come out and people won't even know. It'll just be this thing that happens. So it's interesting. It sounds like they're like kind of struggling with it because it doesn't sound like typical Slipknot. Yeah. It'll be interesting when it does come out to listen to it. I mean, he said it's going to come out this year. So I have a couple, I have a couple more slides on this and then we'll move on. In March of 2023, Taylor discussed the long lost album with NME and explained that he's been pretty out of the loop as far as the re release process for it goes. I was a guest star on that album anyway, so your guess is as good as mine. It's so fascinating that something that started as a demo has become the holy grail. If you only knew how that album came about and the pain it caused, he said. I hope people dig it, but honestly, I hope it never gets released because there are so many expectations about it now. It's like that Wu-Tang Clan album that only what's his fuck has a copy of it's almost better just to wonder <laughs> Interesting. Forgot about that. then then Corey had a change of heart 
A few months later, after saying he hoped Look Outside Your Window never comes out, Taylor seemingly had to ch had a change of heart about its release. He told Enemy that Clown said they hadn't released it yet because of all the singer's other endeavors. I was talking to Clown about it the other day, and he goes, one of the reasons it hasn't come out is because you keep putting shit out, which keeps conflicting with when I want to release it. I was like, fuck, dude, why didn't you tell me? He says, fuck, Taylor, you just got too much shit. Taylor remarked. He added that they had settled on a release timeline and he promised Clown he wouldn't put out any other music around that time so as not to interfere with it. He added that they had settled on a release time and he promised Clown he wouldn't put out... I don't know why they doubled... Sometimes they have the lines twice. I, I swear I clipped that from a different paragraph. Anyway, maybe I just clipped the line twice. I went back and listened to all that stuff and it's so dope and so different. People going into this thinking it sounds like Slipknot are so wrong. It doesn't sound like anything Slipknot have ever done. That's why it's its own thing. To me, it, it, it really is the long lost album. The music is so beautiful. It probably has some of my favorite melodies that I've done and people are really going to dig it. He enthuses. Clown did a really good job. Hmm. So the last, last, uh, thing we'll say about this there were a handful of times since the look outside your window studio sessions Clown says it's mixed and mastered and set to be released this year um that the album was supposed to be released after many delays clown assured that the album was mixed and mastered ready for a 2024 release it's definitely arriving next year you have my word the art's been done it's been mixed it's been mastered it's definitely coming out in 2024 and it's such a great album so there you go uh jay weinberg ex slipknot drummer um Probably thrown out because Slipknot's changing up their sound a little bit. Um, so maybe Eloy Casagrande isn't the drummer. Um, maybe they're going for someone a little more mainstream. Maybe Dave Grawl is going to be the drummer. 